talk today will be the subterranean termite management in horticulture uh, and in gar gardens. For termites, we know that they, in nature, they are recycled. Subterranean termite eat wood. Basically, they live in the nature. They uh, recycle the nutrients from dead trees, uh, fallen logs, but they eat wood. So when we have, we cut down the trees, destroy the natural habitat and put on our house, buildings, and uh, as especially with the urbanization going on, and they will start to attack our house. So this picture showing some of the damage uh, we have experienced over the years. And they, they may live inside the wall. They can eat all the wood component, even your floors and even your instrument, anything that's made of wood. So they can cause millions, millions of dollars uh, damage every year. And also they will attack anything with cellulose. And it doesn't matter if your book, document, your furniture, even your clothes and your, your belongings. And so termite damage can be anywhere. So they eat anything with cellulose. And also you have heard the story that termites eat uh, soft uh, steel sheet. And also with this picture I took uh, 20, uh, zero four from, from from Mississippi, when termite eat through the cable, the rubble, and then caused some shortage um, there. And we have this picture was taken in Auburn, where we have a homeowner. She has uh, a swimming pool, and the swimming pool was leaking over the years. Have that doesn't know what's the problem, and then after the drain the swimming pool, we saw that all the insulations had been tunneled by termites. This had, what time this happened? Basically, termites must have moisture. They need water and wood, and they tunnel in the soil. So they, anything stop them from getting water or getting food, they will tunnel through it. And in, um, in the landscape, they will attack anything. And uh, here, is this picture was taken, sent it to me by one of our county agents, is uh, dogwood, uh, historic dogwood has been damaged by termite, it was dying, and people couldn't figure out what's the problem. And then you see all the termite panels over here. And this one is a uh, per country in Opelika. It's a very big per country. And you see the mud tubes on the truck. And this is for most termite. And this one is also from uh, Opelika. It's a birch tree. Birch tree is the most attractive to termites. So if you want to have a landscape planting in um, don't use per tree, even though they are very pretty. And this is a picture we took on campus. And you see the flowers ornamentals here, and they is dying. And we pulled up, and this root stop here loaded with termite. Not only that, since we are in horticulture team here, and the termite also damaged all our horticultural plants or crops. Doesn't matter if it's in the field or potted plants. And the first picture was sent to me last year by one of our urban employees. She had a potted tomato. And the tomato was dying and it, it, during the fruiting period. And she said, what's going on? And then we went over, we saw this here. See, termite also already nip all the skins from the truck. This one is a uh, bio pepper, and this one is a squash. And this picture was sent to me by, uh, took by chips. And that, that year is a color um, field uh, garden. And 
all the color was dying from no one figured out what the problem is not a disease. So, and then when you pull it up over here, you can see the termite damage is in the ground. So why termite attack our crops, our uh, vegetables? And even in the potted plants, if you look out all the situations, we figure that that's all happened during a drought season. When it is dry and we have the perfect moisture here and the termite will travel kind of from far away uh, around uh, in the nature, in, in the wood, they can kind of, they are attracted by the moisture. They can kind of through here, you provide them with all the uh, essentials they need, food, moisture, and soft soil. Not only above ground, ground they also eat in ground roots and bugs. And this one is onion. You will think the onion, how, how termite can attack the onion? Yes, you see the termite over here. We pulled out. This is the beet, and this is uh, peanuts. Uh, and this one is sand chalk. And this one, people, I, I read online, there are some people saying that, oh, if you have um, garlic, termite will stay away. No, they don't. Look what they damaged over here. So any kind of uh, plants, if it's dry, they need to get water, they need to get food, they will eat it anyway. So people often ask about um, of the different groups of termite, subterranean termite, driver termite, damaged wood termite, yes, yeah, the damage is done by subterranean termite. However, which species is only for, some people said that only for most termite, will attack living uh, plants. No, actually doesn't matter is native subterranean termite or Formosan subterranean termite, they both can attack plants, died or alive. It's very hard to find it to manage termites. Why? Because termites live in and above ground. They have multiple uh, colonies in one area they can have colony here, colony there, colony everywhere. And they have uh, the colonies can kind of together and in a very big network, large foraging areas. And this, they travel, they are mobile. They travel for food, more, uh, water, and soil. How to matter get into garden, in, get into uh, damage our uh, fruit trees and vegetables? Don't, why don't they stay where they are, but invade our horticulture area? Yes, that's the issue. They, you can, they can, for potted plants, sometimes they are bringing from the potted soil. And also they will, uh, if you move mulch to the, uh, around, they can stay in the mulch and you may bring them there. But the most important is the tree stump. And if you have a tree stump, close nearby your garden, your, your uh, orchard, um, that is a dangerous sign. Look at this tree stump, that's a three year old tree stump. They didn't ground it, they didn't treat it. And look, this is in May, uh, between May and June, and the termite is swarming out from there. So they will find a nearby uh, garden and very identical uh, environment, See uh, conditions where the moist, where it's wet with vegetables and cellulose for them to stay, and then they will establish colony there. Once again, all the damage to horticultural plants often happen in drought seasons. If it's wet in nature, they will go away. They can move away, live where they are. But if dried. Only the garden, the orchard will irrigate, will water them, maintain their moisture, and that termite really uh, provide the termite with a favorite uh, uh, habitat. So for control, how do we manage termite in horticulture? Here's some do's. First, remove any of the nesting sites. Doesn't matter if it's a tree stump, 
falling log, landscape uh, lumber or mulch. Don't use, avoid using wood mulch in garden bed. That's very important. And because they provide the conditions favorable to termites. And this is um, termite baiting. This is we haven't talked much yet. Usually we will say if you protect a house, you hire, you contract with a termite service, they will ask you, do you want to use liquid termite treatment uh, to create, uh, create a permit barrier around your house, or you can use base. But we haven't talked about use base in horticulture. Like, uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, did an experiment project and to use baits in a uh, fruit orchard, we include peach, kiwi, and uh, we also use as a tea uh, plantation. And the bait station provide very good uh, control. And of the bait, uh, bait uh, systems, and central con is not a label for a homeowner use. They have to be used by license pest control service. But Trilona, uh, that's uh, also the old name, is advanced termite bait stations. Now it's available to homeowners, to anyone you don't need any license. The active ingredient is in, uh, insect growth regulator, Navalura, is very safe, is will not uh, harm any um, vertebrate vertebrates and will not harm our vegetations. And also they stay inside the station, will not contaminate soil, will not be absorbed, absorbed by, by uh, plants. So it's very safe to use. You can place them around your, the uh, perimeter, around your garden, uh, where you suspect that a termite may come, may have a population there, or you can install them around the tree stump or inside the mulch, and that will attract the termite to it. Or you can directly put them inside the garden. Um, they have two different uh, products. One is, uh, the bottom one is annual. Actually, you put it there, you don't have to do anything, you just replace it every year. And if you say the termite already consumed all the base, you replace them with a new base, new lure. If you don't, just keep them in the ground, you don't have to do anything. And the above one here is the one that you may um, inspect it every three months or half a year. And the lower part has no active ingredient. Termite will eat it, but they will get into the base and be uh, killed. So they have a two different uh, uh, is you can buy it online of some, some dealers. I believe it's around $20 per station and the price may change over the years. The third method is you find you, you can use a nematode product, but when you select to use nematodes, be sure you select the right nematode product because different soil types we all request different products. Some nematodes work better in sandy soil, some maybe in, in a clay soil. So you need to read the label and make sure you buy the right product. And when you use, apply it and follow the label. Very important, nematode is a biological control agents. They are very susceptible to any environmental factors, water, temperature, time of use, sunlight. So read the label. And there's another way, uh, another method we can use is use termite repellent plants. If you read online, there are so many different plants, people say that is a termite repellent, but all this are just kind of a folk word passed on. And uh, there's some is a research, but no very designed research to really show this, the, all this, how they uh, repel termites, how far they, they can work, and how, what's the density you have applied, you have put the plant together to, to establish a 
uh, barrier that stop termite from getting into your orchard, getting into your uh, uh, gardens. So this need more, uh, really need some research to go on. And people will often see that, hi, hey, how about I just spray insecticide? Be, remember this, for termite control, spray insecticide will never work. The reason is, again, termites are subterranean termites. They live in the ground and above ground. If you use a spray on the surface, termites are tiny beneath the soil, maybe uh, five inches, even one feet below, that will never touch them. So it's not doesn't work. All you, but they, and also there are very limited number of pesticides labeled for horticulture use. Spinosad uh, is one of it. It's kind of like a bio, bio uh, organic product, but uh, spray doesn't work. If you use spinosad, you may consider use powder or granular for soil application. But I, I read all the uh, labels uh, before this presentation. No, none of the product labeled you can use for soil applications, but they labeled for apply on vegetables. So that's illegal, but how to, how to uh, walk around to use this. And another thing is how effective sibinosid is against the termite. Uh, I would say the efficacy is not that ideal. If you have a plant path, make sure that elevate plant path off the ground. Don't let it touch ground that give direct connection for termite get into your part. And also you can replace the soil. However, uh, replace the soil only work for potted plants, not for garden or orchard. I will talk about uh, in a second. Okay, in, in uh, speak of mulch, we did an experiment a couple of years ago. We evaluated all the available mulch commonly used by horticulture. And um, we set up the experiment in EV Smith station. And we did uh, uh, inspected the mean trauma activity in mulch for, uh, from August to the next year, July is a year period. And then the data shows that the termite really favor pine chips, any pine uh, product, uh, especially for pine straw. They, they don't really like the pine straw much, but they like fine pine, pine bark. And also we, so we, uh, we, um, we, uh, collect the data on termite activity in the soil five inch below the surface. Again, termite are found in all pine-based mulches, pine chips and pine bark. So seems like this wood uh, mulch pine product is very favorable to termite. But cypress and cedar, they have some kind of essential oil they will first show repellent to termites, but when weathered or seasoned age product, they will lose that. Uh, they will lose that uh, 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 effectiveness. Something we you should not do first: insecticide spray. We already talked about that. And remove or replace top soil that a lot of people will say, hey, I just pick off the soil, remove it, and bring in new soils. Yes, that may work temporarily, but by this spring, termite will retreat from the disturbed area deep into the ground and reappear to attack somewhere else. And also, they will reinvent. That's no problem. They will reinvent very frequently. And also people may say, I can, can I use treated wood for raised gardens? No, that doesn't work at all. Treated wood, it will leach the chemicals that will contaminate the soil and the plants. And, and on top of that, they may create high moisture that may attract termite and serve as a breeding site. So basically, this is what I'm going to uh, I want to talk about. If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to entertain. Uh, 